Hi, I'm Joe D'Agostino, Beach Safety Division Chief for the Destin Fire Control District. Our service was started back in 2003 in a response to the 25 drowning deaths along the Panhandle beaches. Uh, I've been the chief here for 15 years. We're currently averaging 2 million visitors during an eight month season with about 120 people rescued. Uh, our service is extremely unique in that uh, we don't just lifeguard the traditional beachfront, but we've actually been tasked with lifeguarding a navigable waterway with we have three lifeguard towers and another location called Crab Island where we actually have a fire response boat that's staffed with a lifeguard. We have 60 lifeguards in, uh, hired for the season and put out 23 on a single day. We've greatly reduced the drownings in this area where we have actually had consecutive seasons now without any drowning fatalities. Uh, Joe, what happens here? So, so explain what happens here at Crab Island across this, this shallow sandbank over here. Yeah, absolutely. On the starboard side of the vessel, it's about eight foot of water. And then straight away right here on the port side, uh, we have this little spot called Crab Island. It probably stays about a foot to two foot deep. In the summer, we have people from all over um, the deep south, the Midwest, vacationers, tourists come, rent vessels, um, having a good time just like anybody else. We want to be in the shallow water and recreate and play. Well, the tides here are diurnal, so most of the days we have a nice incoming tide um, for 12 hours and people don't realize there's any problem. But the days where that tide's coming in, it's very picturesque, very clear, chamber of commerce type days, what we'll call it. Um, all of a sudden that tide will switch and literally people can get swept off that safe sandbank in the water where they can't swim. Yeah, right. So they so they spent the whole day here. They've let their guard down. They're enjoying the summer. They've had a few drinks. They get into that chest deep water and they've been doing it all day. And now all of a sudden they're worn out. So, so basically, is that what happens? They just can't get back and they get slowly pushed into the deep water. That's exactly what happens when they've kind of, like you said, they put their guard down. They've worn themselves out throughout the day, being in the sun, maybe a drink or two. And um, all of a sudden they're swimming against a two knot current. Right. So, and, and the other thing that's going on too is there's loud music, there's people partying, someone bouncing around and yelling for help isn't a real sign of yelling for help because, because no one really can hear. I mean, it's chaos here, right? It's, 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 it's absolute it's, chaos. There's not a, there's from that bridge behind us, you wouldn't be able to see the bottom. It's yeah. boat to boat. Every year we have at least one uh, uh, emergency call come out where lifeguards, fire personnel, as well are looking for somebody in it which for us is considered still a rescue scenario we're able to um with a fire boat and lifeguards on jet skis get to this location sometimes within just two minutes right. so we're and it's still in an active rescue situation um sometimes we've had as many as six in the summer so we have uh most bystanders are able to give us uh if i was to just maybe make an estimate 250 square foot area from the last spot that the person was seen right. um we've even had it some uh, one incident where someone was actually within hands reach distance from their loved one uh, under a pontoon boat and they just didn't make it so we were able to determine that the person was literally right below that pontoon right. boat so the first thing we'll try and do is um from our sogs from the fire and the lifeguard side that's the fire control district We'll actually put a datum or a buoy out where, where we believe, where we've been get, given some um, viable information, where the last known uh, uh, location of the person was. Um, lifeguards and or fire personnel will get in the water and start an inline search or a square search pattern. Um, the fire vessel also has side scan, is equipped with side scan. Um, the other local agencies, um, two of the local agencies, local sheriff and um, Florida Wildlife, FWC, I believe, has side scan as well. They'll do patrols on the perimeter trying to pick up um, with side scan. So what's the response time? Well, response time is actually fairly quick. Um, the fire boat can get on the scene sometimes within a minute to two minutes, okay. um, especially when they're actively patrolling in the summer. Um, the fire boat is staffed. Um, so we were able to get here quick. I know that most of the other entities were still going to consider it rescue mode for one hour so right. we are still doing um this is still for us considered uh, the fire department is not in the body recovery business these people are still considered missing people that are uh, considered viable patients well i guess that brings me to where the aqua can be used here add that to the resources that you already have you can there's you can never have enough resources right. um, anytime this goes this situation occurs um it feels like an hourglass it's time is going so quick um, um, you don't have enough people and all of a sudden the term needle in a haystack looking for one person in a few 
billion, billions and billions of gallons of water. So no, you're absolutely right, Phil. We will have these situations unfold, and accidents happen. Local officials, we do the best that we can to try and uh, prevent these things from happening. But when they do, um, you need your public safety uh, 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 resources and response units to be able to, to, to rectify that situation almost immediately. The last thing people want to do is, is have that stuff linger for days in the newspaper. Where families wonder, you know, what what's become of their loved one. Um, if if the event does turn tragic, you need closure instantly. Yeah, it does. It does give the uh, the public confidence that you you're having an acquire. You have the the latest technology on hand and ready to roll. The person's not going to start floating for days. They're right. going to be on the bottom for to have something like the aqua, that, that tool in their toolbox. Maybe they can do better. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, Joe, we, we've always appreciated that you're on the forefront of lifeguarding. I know that when you came here 15 years ago, you know, there were a lot of deaths and you've really curbed that, the, those results and you've changed a lot of things around here. And so I'm sure that the aqua is going to be the first for uh, to the lifeguard service and uh, this is the perfect environment. We, we hope we never have to use it, but the day, the day will come, and it'll yeah. be a good tool. Absolutely. Cheers. the finger jetty it's uh it's it's south of noriego point and uh it's a it's a local favorite for uh all the local snorkelers the snorkeling companies that bring hundreds of people down here to uh to free dive and snorkel off this little rock rock wall here now joe's going to tell us about the dangers of of what this rock wall does and and how many people come here and how many people actually get into trouble we are in uh, an inlet we're in the uh the destined pass it uh it, it filters out every 12 hours on the tide changes um and it can get very very dangerous here but that does not stop the people from coming here and joe and joe has a lot of problems here so uh so joe you get lots of people down here we do in the summer in the peak summer this area for snorkeling we'll see up to a thousand people at once recreating in this in this little corner um, and very similar phenomenon to just the same as Crab Island we'll have the outgoing tide the tide will just channel along the, the rock walls here and when it hits this finger jetty it actually makes a turn and goes out and creates a rotating uh, eddy type situation but again it just boils down to people not being able to touch uh, overestimating their swim abilities um, and their snorkeling abilities or sometimes they just lose their focus they see something uh, tropical fish um, something of interest and um, the next thing you know they're headed towards Cancun. Yeah right so there's a hydraulic that's formed because this water, this rock wall over here creates a hydraulic and there's a constant hole and we just measured that hole at 50 feet deep. Um, now now that hole you have recovered bodies out of that hole. We have unfortunately we have we've had some folks go down they've ended up in the bottom of that hole um, we were, we've gotten um, actually two people from that hole uh, and both were um, considered viable patients when we started the rescue. Um, both people did not make it, but we were able to get them um, in eight minutes and um, I think one took actually 20 minutes before we were able to get the person. One of the things Destin Fire Control District Beach Safety Division does is uh, utilize technology to assist us in rescues and our search patterns. Currently we have uh, side scan imaging on our Destin fireboat. We also use GPS tracking on our ATVs. One of the things that we find that's a bit archaic is that we're still utilizing manpower and search patterns to, to look for people when they submerge. Using expanding square, U pattern, and inline searches is old, which is why we want to bring in the Aqua Eye more modern technology to help us save time and money and bring closure to a bad incident for those that are involved.
having something like Aqua Eye where we can actually pinpoint it. Um, you know, ideally we want to we want to rescue, we, and, and, or, or if it is recover, we want to recover. Um, I think the, the the days of like you had mentioned earlier when we were back at Crab Island, the days of actually doing manual searching and inline search or box search patterns, um, it's starting to get antiquated with the technology that's out there. That's the thing, in the past, it's just been by luck that your guys have actually swam on top of them, right? It, it has been with luck, and I think some of that too is at certain times the hydraulic just puts that person in that one spot, and that's where the water kind of set, settles yep. them, um, and they kind of, you know, they're not so much of a, of a moving target, they kind of end up in that in that one area. Um, when we were able to get the one person, they actually did have a, uh, a small little 15, a little pony, so he was able to get about three or four breaths in the process. Yeah, because one of the things with the, the aqua eye is, is you're going to need to create a search pattern, and that deep hole, you can, you can uh, the initial attack on the rescue would be to get out and around that hole and point that aqua eye into it. Absolutely. And locate the person and then have them dive down. And um, ideally we'd like that person to make one dive as opposed to making correct. hundreds of dives. Right, right, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, uh, a dangerous place. I've been here and I've seen that all the people diff diving off that rock wall there, snorkeling and uh, with an outgoing tide, it can get incredibly dangerous. Incredibly dangerous. Yeah, so, well thanks Joe, thanks for showing us, uh, showing us your dangers and, um, and we'll get in the water tomorrow with Aquai. Let's do it.